One of the reasons the Third Reich garnered the popular vote in Germany was Adolf Hitler's ability to rouse a crowd. His nationalist proclamations gave light to his critics and romanticized the Nazi party in the eyes of millions of Germans. If you weren't lucky to hear Adolf in person, Joseph Goebbels and filmmaker Lenny Riefenstahl immortalized their exploits in all the glory of 35mm film. Indeed, if you listen to one of the Führer's many speeches today, totally out of context, you may end up liking the old chap. Fast forward to 2012. Billion dollar social networks have propelled a worldwide consciousness. One in which clips of privileged young men assaulting their elders in broad daylight spread like so many revolutions in the Arab Spring. Indeed, this administration was positioned to take full advantage not just of the PNM's own missteps and mistakes, but for the first time in our nation's history, the full power of the media. But instead of using their strength and powers for good, we are bombarded by sycophant utterings on blogs, threats to journalists and editors of major publications, horror stories of state-run media being guided by government whims, live simulcasted rum shop talks meant to convince a cynical population, and the latest tool, feel-good rallies heralded through every town today on megaphones and set to feel-good music. But there was something her Goebbels didn't bank on, and that remains true to today. The people can always smell a rat and will always have the final word. There are indications that more than before people aren't going to validate Mr. Volney's assertions that our memory has a time limit. Dr. Tim says the voters will decide, but how much more can our twin rocks take? Until that tipping point arrives, we're all but forced to watch the circus that passes for governance in these parts. An opportunity for the promised change slipping by with every cartwheel. Lord, put a hand. Amen.